you ever find yourself spinning up a new VM in Proxmox and thinking, all right, here we go again, log in, set the host name, create a user, paste your SSH key if that's what you're using, fix your network, install, update, and now multiply that by 10 or 20, and every time you rebuild a test environment. Today, we're talking about Proxmox Cloud in it, reason on that. what it is and why it exists. Ninety percent of you who view these videos aren't subscribed, so if you found this or any other of our videos useful, be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything 45 Home Lab. Wanted to shout out everybody who has subscribed over the last month and before. We shot from 4K to over 5K subs in just about 30 days. <laughs> That's really crazy to me. Just wanted to say thank you to everybody who views, subscribes, comments, whether it be a question, constructive criticism, or anything else in between. And with that said, let's get into it. Howdy folks, Zach Perry back here with 45 Home Lab. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know I'm a big fan of anything that is Proxmox related. Cloud in it is one of those features that's been in Proxmox for a long time, but it's something I've used here and there when needed testing, and that's where my use of it kind of stopped. But I wanted to sit down and get kind of a better understanding of it, because it is something within Proxmox that's widely used. So in this first video, we're staying pretty high level. This will be a part one of two, and we'll be talking about what Cloud in it actually is, what problem it solves, when it makes sense to, you know, actually use it, when it doesn't, and there'll be a few other things that we're covering as well. So how it fits into a modern workflow in part two, we'll go into actually, you know, building a cloud in a template from scratch and deploy real VMs with it. Now, first things first, what exactly is cloud in it? And at its core, it's a first boot initialization system. It's a software that runs inside of the guest operating system the very first time the VM boots up. Now, on first boot, it's going to read configuration data and applies it automatically. That configuration can include a couple of different things, but it's mainly gonna comprise of host name, user accounts, SSH keys, networking, so DHCP or static IPs, depending on how you want to set it up. DNS, it can either use the host or it can, you can apply your own packages, set up scripts, and Cloud in it didn't come from Proxmox originally, it came from the cloud world. So OpenStack, AWS, Azure, so on and so forth, where instances are created constantly and they must configure themselves automatically. Proxmox, what it kind of did was it exposed that mechanism locally, which means you can get cloud style VM provisioning in your home lab. Now, what problem does cloud in it solve? The big problem that it solves is repeat work. So without cloud in it, most Proxmox workflows look like this. It might not be for all, but it's definitely the case for myself. It'd be install an OS, you boot it, you log in, you manually configure everything. So additional users, your networking packages, and then clone it and hope you didn't forget something. Now, CloudIn flips that around. Instead of baking configuration into the image and doing everything manually after boot, you're going to build a clean generic base image. You're gonna tell Proxmox, you want this instance what you want it to look like, let cloud in it apply it automatically on first boot. So before you do anything else, it's gonna do that. Every VM starts life clean, predictable, and consistent. If you've ever had a slightly different SSH config between VMs, networking set wrong on a clone, forget to change the machine ID or the host name, done that a few times, <laughs> cloud in it exists specifically to prevent. And how cloud in it works conceptually within Proxmox. And here's kind of the mental model that I uh, kind of attribute to it. So Proxmox doesn't actually configure the OS directly. Instead, Proxmox is going to generate a cloud, a tiny, little, little tiny, uh, cloud init metadata image, attach it to the VM as a virtual CD-ROM, it boots the VM, and then inside of the VM, cloud init is going to do a few different things. It's going to detect that metadata that is coming from that cloud init disk. It's going to read it. It's going to apply the configuration that you have set uh, exactly once on first boot. Now, when should you use cloud init? There's a bunch of different tools, a bunch of different things within Proxmox, but cloud init specifically really shines when you deploy VMs regularly. You want consistent base configuration. You're building clusters, anything that needs a lot of similar images, let's say Kubernetes, Ceph, any kind of test labs like that that you're doing nested. 
you automate provisioning with scripts or Terraform, you rebuild environments often. It's especially useful if you treat VMs as disposable infrastructure, which is what I do. And instead of, you know, these precious things, they're sort of a spin them up, use them, destroy them, recreate, clean, half document. You don't have to deal with that anymore. Now, when Cloud Init might be overkill, it might be not worth the effort if you're only deploying a handful of different VMs. You ha hand configure everything and you never clone it. Everything's just a one-off. You want heavy customization baked permanently into the OS for cases. Cloud in it isn't wrong, it's just not really buying it too much. But the moment you start thinking in templates and automation, it becomes very hard to justify not using it. Cloud in it versus some alternative ways to do things, and these kind of work hand in hand, but some of them are post-deploy shell scripts. So things like Proxmenu X, some of the things within there, or your own script, Ansible if you're running that after your first login to do some configurations. Those all work, but they happen after the VM's already, or after it already exists. Cloud Init happens during that creation, and that difference matters. Networking is correct immediately, SSH works immediately, if you have this all done right off the bat, I mean, but no manual login required, it's cleaner, faster, more reliable for a first boot configuration. So that is Cloud Init from a conceptual standpoint. Like I said, this is kind of a high level, just given the bare bones there of what it is, why it exists, where it fits into Proxmox. Now in part two, we are going practical with it. We are going to be downloading a cloud image, uh, building a Proxmox cloud in a template, and configuring users, SSH, and networking, and cloning real VMs from it. And calling out common mistakes that, mistakes that I came across when I was doing it. And if anything's ever kind of felt confusing, those common pitfalls, we'll kind of cover through all of those. So that is part one of our Proxmox Cloud Init video, kind of in a nutshell there. Uh, just covering very, very high level stuff. Now in part two, we're going to be getting more hands on. With that said, if you want to see everything that we do have on offer, head on over to store.45homelab.com. If you want to see everything that we're doing day to day, our socials will be down in the description below. And with that said, hope you all have a nice one and I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Proxmox, 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 Proxmox. Don't say it. Don't you say it. Proxmox. Come on.